For 20 years now, the Whitley Awards have pioneered effective ways of protecting wild nature by raising the profile and providing funds for outstanding conservation leaders around the world. Over the years, the Whitley Fund has awarded nearly 10 million pounds to these champions and their teams, funding work that has made a positive difference to wildlife, the local community, and the environment that they share. The range of challenges the winners face is remarkable. Their solutions are diverse, and together, their reach is truly global. Snow leopards get killed by local people because snow leopards kill their livestock, which is the most important source of sustenance for them. We've been working not just with governments, but with local communities across large landscapes in snow leopard habitats. And in all these areas, uh, we've been able to effect real on-ground conservation and bring down or completely curtail the extent of uh, retribution killing of snow leopards by local people. Whitley Award winners have shown us that it is possible to achieve positive conservation results even in times of monumental change. The population of the world is 7 billion people, so we have to learn to use the resources that we have, the natural resources, in a more wise way. By the time I retire, maybe in 20 or 25 years' time, I want to make sure that I did my very best to secure that penguin populations are going to last for a long time and that my kids and my grandchildren will be able to enjoy penguins in the wild as I enjoyed them when I was a kid. The main question for me in conservation is how we can have humans living with decent standards and conservation of ecosystems at the same time in balance. For Angela, this is most effectively achieved through community-led education and research. We have to improve local livelihoods because if people have decent incomes, they have potable water that will be reflected in the conservation of their environment. The Whitley Fund for Nature is fundamentally different from many other organizations in that it invests directly in people. By finding the champion, who is out there, not just fighting, but celebrating and loving and enjoying whatever it is they work on. Whitley funds have gone to support all types of conservation and all types of wildlife, from the largest animal ever to have lived, the blue whale, right down to tiny bees. I'm an entomologist. I study bugs. And the Whitley Fund for Nature has supported and encouraged and allowed me to take my passion for insects and translate it into real conservation and real change in terms of farming and biodiversity appreciation and show that they really are the little things that run the planet. In 20 years, the Whitley Awards have grown to support a network of 160 conservationists working in 70 countries spread across every continent. Whitley Award winners are working to protect an extraordinarily diverse range of habitats, from rainforest to deserts, from mountain ranges to caves, and from coral reefs to open ocean. Our main problem are unsustainable industrial fisheries that don't only kill sea turtles and sharks, but that also threaten the livelihood of sustainable fishermen. That's why we're promoting marine management areas with the local fishers and rid them of the pressures of the industrial fisheries that do destructive fishery practices. The Whitley Award winners don't just watch and measure, they act. They are the experts, not us. They know what to do, and more importantly, how to get it done. But they don't work alone. They're part of successful teams working closely with the local community in their own countries to enable people to appreciate and benefit from the real value of the habitats and wildlife around them. Most young men that used to go to the field would use parrots as a source of income. So what we said to them was, well, if you, if you work with us, would you, in exchange for a regular salary, work on the parrot conservation? And they very quickly did. So it had a very big impact. 
When we started working, we had 100% poaching, and over the years, we brought down that to 0% in some years, on, on about 30% average. Population size of the yellow-shouldered parrot now has doubled, and its uh, risk of extinction has significantly decreased. Good conservation work is always going to be done at grassroots, and it has to be done by people who, who really understand their area. Since 1999, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal has been the charity's patron and has seen how strong the connection has to be between winners and the often isolated communities that they work with. How do you explain to local communities that it is in their long-term interests to alter the way in which they've been surviving, in some cases, to allow for a greater degree of survival for some species in their areas? That's a really difficult thing to do, and I don't think we understand just how difficult that can be. I think the really encouraging thing has been the, the number of winners who've been individuals who've stuck out, and they have been able to make a real difference. The Princess Royal meets every new winner as they receive their award, and has also paid visits to projects in the field to gain a deeper understanding of the issues our winners face. Going up river to see the dolphins is a wonderful thing to be able to do, but to understand how that impacts on the communities who live on that river, and the value of having those dolphins in your river, as well as the fish, that's when you really understand what an impact it makes, because the alternatives are not great. Over 20 years, the awards have striven to lift the profiles of the conservation leaders and their teams working on the front line to international attention. A photograph with royalty immediately puts you in the global scene. It brings you to the top of the news straight away. The Peruvian anchoveta fishery accounts for 10% of all fish catches in the world. Currently, it produces mainly animal fodder but it could help feed hungry people across the planet. I'm trying to affect the largest fishery on Earth, so I can't just go local. I have to affect global markets. I need to have people love anchovies. I need to create this desire and change the image from this ugly, stinky brown fish into the most desirable fish in the planet. And that, that, to do that, I need to, to engage the global media, the big magazines, and, and to create a big food trend. Before winning the Willy Gold Award, I tried to put the, the topic of the illegal trade of nine monkeys on the national agenda. It never happened. After winning the Gold Award, it was amazing because I got the media coverage at national and international level, and we are doing a very great job thanks to the Willy Award. Winning the Whitley Gold Award in 2004 provided us with financial stability not only to carry out our immediate activities, but also to approach other funders and secure more funding for future projects. The Weekly Awards recognize the importance of supporting a small project at the right moment and, as it grows, to ensure its efforts are sustainable in the long run. But that sustainability is fundamentally underpinned by the dedication and generosity of the donors who have supported the charity over the last 20 years. Most of the funders of the awards have understood that it isn't a one-off and that results from the sort of work that you're talking about don't happen in a year. That is built into their assumptions that this will be an ongoing relationship because that's what really makes the difference. The fact that we can come back to the Whitney Fund for Nature and present our ideas as they evolve and they mature and they, and they change and continue to receive support makes a big, big difference. Perhaps the greatest legacy of the charity is the growing network of winners themselves, who represent some of the best conservation leaders in the world. They have a wealth of experience between them and actively support and promote each other's work. I think there's been more than a hundred Whitley awardees uh, so far, but uh, they need to be not a hundred Whitley awardees globally, but a hundred Whitley awardees in every country. The last two decades are just the beginning, and we've only just started to see what the network can do acting together. Help us support another 20 years of amazing Whitley Award winners.